we're still wasting trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars. Okay, I've spent 30 years teaching agency engineers just like you how to save millions of dollars. And I can't tell enough people fast enough, so I need your help. That's why I'm reaching out to everybody I can find to change how we do things. So let's talk a little bit about the right treatment on the right road at the right time of the right contractor and for the right reason. Here's the tools in the toolbox. Everybody knows them. You probably are familiar with most of all these treatments, but notice that some pavement preservation treatments also act as a wearing surface, and some of them actually act as a combination treatment. A couple of the top of the curve treatments, so often these are the areas that get neglected along the way. When the roads start from 100 down to 90, down to 80, down to 70, so often we set up our decision trees in the pavement management system to ignore those roads and try to fund all the roads in the what I would call the yellow and the red category. I just want to draw your attention to the fact that if you take funds, perhaps 20% of your annual budget, out of the general funds and apply them to the top of the curve. So by applying these treatments earlier in the life cycle of your roadway, you can take a road that's a 90 or an 85 and extend its life out for several more years to come. Now, it's not a major rehabilitation granted. It's not going to reset the clock to 100 with a PCI rating of 100 being brand new and zero being undrivable. However, it will hold on to the 80 and keep it going for several years later on. So let's just drill down and talk about two or three treatments in specific that could achieve this common goal. You've got slurry, microsurfacing, and the high density mineral bonds that can come to your agency. Now, in a private sector parking lot, you probably heard terms like seal coat, and a lot of times these terms are used interchangeably with slurry and chip seals. I just want to be clear that we're not advocating the use of seal coat on your agency roads or in your subdivision roads. We're actually talking about slurries, chip seals, microservicings, and the high density mineral bond. And I just want to go out on record as saying that the Blair Barnhart disclaimer, I don't get paid to say any of this. Um, nobody's you know, buying me lunch because we're talking about HA5. But when I see something, I've been in the industry for 30 years, when I see something that works, I want to tell everybody we know, you know, we talk about slurry and micro as being a preserving treatment, that it actually works better as it gets a little down the curve. Maybe if we got in and did the HA5 in the 9085 PCI range and use this, then it would have more tremendous potential for extending the service life. We've come across a spot that was done four years ago. That's right, four years ago. Look at this vivid contrast line right here. This product was put down a week apart. We have Treg standing on an emulsified seal coat. Now, I, you know what? They're still doing something. They're preserving the roads. They're putting down a little black paint. I'm not here to condemn seal coat. It has its purpose. Just I don't know where. And look at the HA5, how it's still holding up on this side. You know, after 30 years of construction, it takes a lot to get me excited. But today, I've got to tell you, this, we don't even need to talk, Mark. This picture says it all right here. Clearly the emulsified seal coat has lost its appeal. It's not doing anything as far as aesthetics, as far as I'm concerned, Trey. It hasn't increased the value of these houses. It hasn't lowered the cost of ownership. It's not preserving this structure. And look at this side where the HA5 is, how it's sealed itself into the void space in this oxidized asphalt. We're in a high desert condition. Pavement temperature in the summer is probably about 160, 170 degrees Fahrenheit and we're holding on to this road for four years now. I'm very impressed uh, with the HA5 product. I think it's something everybody should look at. This is a product that's going to be available at some point, probably in various states all over. Right now you can get it in Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. And I'd encourage you people to look at this product and try it out. If you have hundreds of millions of dollars of roadways you're taking care of, and you don't have enough money to take care of them. You're not given enough money. Every one of you, I hate to say it, every one of you is set up to fail. So you've got to find a way to stretch those dollars. And I know I sound like a broken record. But if I'm given the choice of, of you know, I'm not going to say numbers. If it's, a, if it's uh, X for this and 30 cents more for this, and I see this, it's no-brainer. 
And I see the potential for this. For all my life, I've looked for something like this to seal up the, the recycled mat. This is a UV sealer and a water protection sealer right there. Look at this. You see this porosity? Watch the, this water's draining into that asphalt. It's going, it's getting sucked in there like a vortex. It won't go in here after four years. It's running down the road. Okay. It takes a lot to get me excited. When I see something that works, I want to share it with the world. And my only, my only complaint to the guys here at Holbrook is that they don't have it in every state in America. You'll see a lot of paving contractors go into a subdivision like this and they'll pave it and put sand on top to stop people from scuffing it early. So it looks like we've got a very scuff resistant material. So I got to think, in my mind, I, I don't see that there would be an upper traffic limit to it, just the way it is with that formulation. It looks to be a very tough surface. They waited like 10 years to launch the product. They wanted to see how it was going to react before they went out and started marketing. You've got to appreciate that. I mean, a lot of stuff that we buy on a regular basis has been proven for like a day. They put this stuff on the ground. They waited 10 years to see if it's going to work. It damn does work. And I would encourage you to look at it if you're not using it. Orange book, it's already specified. It's in your book. And be cautious. Some of the other products out there don't meet the specification. In fact, none of them do. The HA5 is the only one that meets mineral bond specification in the Orange Book. Excellent. You know, you put a, a person on the ground and you get down there and you start measuring things and doing some forensics. You'll see with your own two eyes. I, if we only go to the one job even and got out of the bus and we looked at that for 10 seconds, you'd be convinced like I was. If you haven't used the HA5 yet, I would highly recommend come on the bus trip, see what it's all about. Watch your specifications and don't rely on ASTM standards to dictate what you should be using. Look at something that's been on the ground for 10 or 15 years and make that your ultimately, ultimate deciding factor. This is the oldest HA5 demonstration project that was done back in 2002 on a road that was 1996 uh, vintage year of construction. Look at that cul-de-sac down there. The city has come in after the fact and patched around a manhole structure that I'm assuming they dropped a little bit to get it on grade. The HA5 is holding up better even though it's almost 12 years old than the new asphalt that was put around that. I don't know if too many engineers that would come out here and argue that the HA5 doesn't have the potential to ward off those ultraviolet rays. here in the high desert climate oxidizing but it's losing the fines so I think that's a critical um, benefit for the HA5 and the fines have gone they've washed out into the drain but this is the great thing about a product such as a mineral bond is it locks in the fines so if you look at this texture versus that texture this is part of the reason why 13 years later we're looking at that and it still looks really good now these products have proprietary names from time to time, and quite often they may be sole source. But I want to point something out that's very important. If it comes time to bid your work, and you only have one bid for a pavement preservation item, there is a way to go on the Federal Highway's website and Google this. I don't have the paper in front of me right now. But our Federal Highway experts have recognize the need to have preventative maintenance treatments go down on the roadways. And if they are sole source, you have full permission from federal highways to utilize those contractors that may be the only source for particular products, such as the HA5 type products, the mineral bond that you see specified in the APWA manual. Keep those good roads good longer and you'll have a lot more money left over in your budget to fix those roads in the yellow and the red categories. And don't ever overlook the fact that these same pavement preservation treatments at the top of the curve can be used for your final wearing course on your in-place asphalt recycled mixes. So this is Blair Barnhart, again, Executive Director of the International Pavement Management Association and the host of DrivingAmericaForBetterRoads.com.